Men blocking other men on social media is incredibly gay and incredibly retarded with a capital R. Gay with a capital G and retarded with a capital R. I'm already demonetized, so it doesn't fucking matter who gives a fucking shit. It's the truth. A man going to onto another man's profile, clicking their page, going to the dots, selecting, going scrolling down, selecting block because they said something they didn't like on social media. It's fucking retarded and it's fucking gay. Why is it retarded and gay, you ask, Agostino? Because if somebody's not directly going under your shit and trying to like poke at you and fucking tickle your fucking balls, keep kicking you in the fucking nuts all the time, then maybe the block feature might be an option. But I still think as a man, you should not be going out of here to block anybody. Like really and truly, if it's really that deep, just turn your phone off. Do you know I mean, go outside, touch grab. It's not that deep. Tremaine felt it necessary to come up on social media and basically throw a lot of indirects out there about the collection and about maybe throwing that suggestion out there that maybe Martin Rose had copied some of his designs, maybe Supreme had copied some of his designs in the collaboration. I don't really know what he said. He wasn't really being clear. This is what he he said on social and what people deduced to be him maybe throwing some subliminal shots at Martin Rose and Supreme for their recent collaboration. So when it was announced that Martin Rose and Supreme were collaborating, Tremaine tweeted the following. Them hipsters at 62 King Street better stop jacking my style. Y'all be doing it for years. That shit is a rap B. Shit is blood sport out here. Jigger no. Some y'all ain't gonna walk down Spring Street since 176 opened. As my nigga on Over and Under, big up Over and Under, which I'm a big fan of, they clearly stated here to kind of clear up any, you know, miscommunication. 62 King Street refers to the Supreme Headquarters. Rather than retail locations, Supreme physical lo stores are located in other just in New York, such as Bull, Barry, and Brooklyn. So in this sort of like weird quasi gangster faux message he was sending, I guess he was trying to make it known that the people at Supreme HQ were copying some of his shit, jacking some of his shit. He's had enough, and it's on site for people. That's what he, that's what I kind of got from what he was saying. I don't really know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. When I saw this tweet, right. I was disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed because I felt as if this guy turned the corner. After listening to the interview that he did with that Angela back guy from Awake, who also used to work at Supreme, and is now doing some bits with his brand, and I kind of reviewed some of their full collection, and it's really fucking good. It's kind of improving season in season, season in season out. But when he sat down with Angela back on the Business of Hype, Hype Beast podcast, and they spoke about Supreme, it sounded like by that point, he'd already got over it because I felt like he went through like three or four interviews three or four cycles of like frustration and annoyance and saying shit online and going fucking crazy but it seemed like when he spoke to that angela back guy and they had a real conversation because obviously angela also used to work for supreme and angela also left to do his own brand so you could deduce that maybe angela also maybe had his own issues with supreme that made him leave and want to do his own thing i don't know i'm not putting words in his mouth but you can maybe deduce so i felt like when they sat down they had a lot of stuff in common and, you know, Angela probably got it. And without even saying certain things, they were able to kind of get through it. And I think at that particular interview, I think that might be the first one I listened to of Tremaine, where he actually took some accountability. Because from the previous ones, he took zero accountability. He made it seem like Supreme did everything wrong. He was completely perfect. He was above reproach. Didn't do anything wrong at all. And that they scummed him. They fucking snaked him. And it's all their fault. And then, of course, you know, he threw out you know, ludicrous claims out there that they were, you know, systemically racist and all this malarkey, right? Which is, you know, doesn't even bother to kind of entertain or to talk about, um, especially when you're the one that's getting hired. It doesn't make any sense. But regardless, it seemed like he kind of got over it when he spoke to Angela back. And it was like, oh, thank God. Because knowing this guy briefly for a very short time, I think I might have met him in life, in real life, maybe twice, twice in real life. But even when I met him twice in real life and maybe I'd heard of him through other people speaking because I think he was way more closer with another friend of mine than I was with him, to be honest. But, you know, you people always kind of speak highly of him. And at that time, too, when he was at, in London coming up, he was very friendly and close with A-Side. And A-Side is somebody that I kind of knew very closely when I was younger, too. Somebody that kind of essentially gave me my start in the streetwear scene, gave me the job basically single-handedly gave me the job on a plate to work at 1948 which then opened all the doors for me to go to all these different places go to you know call different internships and work at magazines and do my own thing and ah right it's, it's unfortunate how it ended you know with that guy because you know i don't really like him anymore too much 
but he was responsible for legitimately, you know, um, holding the door open and allowing me to kind of walk through. Especially back in those days when the streetwear scene and sneaker scene in London was super clicky and full of wankers and shit. I'm not sure it might be the same thing now, but back then it was a worse. So you kind of needed that intro. And once I got that intro with the May side and I got the cosign from Nike, it was fucking easy. You know what I mean? It's plain sailing, which is really gross, but it's the way it is. But even back then, when everybody knew A side was a bit of a cunt and hard to get on with, but you had to kind of make, you kind of had to figure it out because he was the main guy at Nike at the time. Tremaine was also always seen, or not even at that time, just Ace I was a cunt in general, but Tremaine was always seen as like the nice guy. Oh, he's the nice one. He's the good, like he's the, I mean, he's the personable one. I don't know if that's true. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it always seemed like he was the, you know, if Ace I was a bad cop, he was a good cop. So he had a lot of like goodwill behind him. And if anything, I'd kind of, I'd kind of look at him similar to like what Heron Preston was doing in New York. Similar, similar, where it was like, the personality, the guy around town, he's all, that, he's all at all the parties, he knows everybody, he used to work at Mark Jacobs, you know, all this sort of stuff, like, everyone kind of was rooting for him, so I think when this whole, like, thing happened, and he was able to kind of make Denim Tears into a thing, and before that, the capture collection he did with, I think it was under Art Dads, that was done with, um, that was done when uh, Virgil was still at Off-White, when he was still alive, RIP to him, it seemed like everybody was like happy. Oh shit! That one of the good guys has sort of like made it and is kind of doing their thing. And obviously, then tears takes off and it does this thing and it kind of blows up and shit and everything's looking fucking rosy. But then I, f- I guess, unfortunately, I guess what we've seen with Tr- Tremaine and again, maybe because I've, I don't really know the guy too well, I don't really know him at all. But maybe this is kind of evidence that the industry does corrupt you at some point because I think the person that I was aware of the good guy was a good guy but eventually along the way the industry just does something to you whether it breaks your heart whether it breaks your resolve whether it disappoints you whether it betrays you something happens in an industry that turns even decent people people that you are rooting for that you were like oh shit this is sick and i think even though i'm gonna show you my tweet that i said before that was a little bit mean-spirited and nasty i think at the genesis of it you would root more for somebody like him because you know he's not really he's not a virgil he's not like a super talented dog he's gonna really really make it person it's like a he's probably more akin to like what an average person or a fan would be so you could probably live vicariously through someone like this and see someone like this as a person to kind of look up to because they're more close to what you are as opposed to like the virgils or the martin rose and wissalaki right because their talent and their ability to work is just on another level so maybe you can't really see them as like people that you can kind of emulate. But when the people like Tremaine and stuff make it, it's like, oh shit, if they can do it, I can do it too. You know, with all respect intended. But unfortunately, I guess the industry just fucks you up in some way because that's the only way to really explain how, you know, a standard work dispute, I think so, it's not too bad, where you have some fallings out with a place that you worked at. It doesn't really work 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 out how you wanted it you leave maybe on a bit of bad terms but it doesn't explain why he's still holding on to it and he still can't let it go the only reason i could think of is that the industry broke him or something else happened at supreme that he hasn't divulged yet that was far deeper far more sinister far more you know that was far more deep than what we know of because the way he still keeps mentioning supreme and throwing out little subliminals and and it and they're not even like in a funny like it'll be it'll be far more interesting and cool to kind of observe from afar if you're just being funny with it it seems like he's really bitter like really still affected by the supreme breakup and for me reading between the lines and understanding how the industry works a little bit like it doesn't seem like that big of a deal they just weren't a great match they started off with good intentions supreme wanting to do a good thing i think the appointment of him was great i think it was very brave um, it's also made sense because of where the damn tears was. It just didn't work out. It's not that big of a deal. Like everyone could just like shake hands and keep it moving, but for some reason that hasn't happened. So obviously that doesn't that didn't happen. Tremaine wasn't happy about it. So I decided to get on my social medias and say something about the issue too. Um, when I went under drops. Dot gg account when they posted the following. Um, they obviously took a screenshot of what um, he said and then commented and said, 
all blood does is whining and shit talking on supreme it's time to move on old man and then i guess he tweeted again next that the tears the, the tremaine blocked him and i think i asked as well what is it about and then i think i left my comment down there as well regarding the whole issue and i said the following um martin rose is what denim tears should have been if tremaine was a talented designer spent less time and spent less time crying on social media and if he didn't take the supreme job and just focus on his own brand some more instead it's fried chicken and watermelon merch brand masquerading as a streetwear brand he only has himself to blame now to be fair to him and to be fair to his blockage even though i think it's gay and retarded for men to block other men it shows that you're way too pressed about things online that you shouldn't really be too pressed about especially as a grown man who gives a fuck but to be fair to him what i did say was kind of mean unnecessary there's a lot of kind of unnecessary sassy jibes there you know but i'm on twitter people you know you, you kind of get infected with the twitter virus but you just want to throw out fucking hot takes and you know be mr spicy mcgee so maybe the things that i said in the way that i said it wasn't necessary to kind of say martin rose is what then maybe the first line is fine but then throwing in the line of like oh if them tears was a talented designer you know it's just a little bit unnecessarily condescending and snarky it doesn't need to be that way i could have got my point across on saying martin rose is what them tears uh, martin rose is what them is what i hoped that them tears would have been it's a shame he can't let go of what happened you know it could have been done in a very more it could have been done in a way more graceful way than what i did you know it wasn't necessary to say it the way i said it but in general i think what i was trying to get at was just a frustration of seeing somebody that's clearly on their way to kind of creating great things and is just not able to get out of their own way and can't see it and doesn't understand how they're being viewed you know they can't see how they look by what they're saying they just see their own frustration and their own fucking you know whatever they went through with supreme and just trying to voice it and it's really it's like it's not that big of a deal and of course tremaine then replied um quickly deleted the comment by the way and then blocked me which is again understandable given what i wrote but still sounds um very gay tremaine replied to that comment and said the following a fan commenting from the stands about players on the court trash talking here is a little morsel for your trolls martin had the job before i did for a bit and left slash got clipped due to dogmatic systems up there she's a legend i would never come at her but i digress now i understand again going meanie for meanie right machine for machine mean for mean i get the snark i get the condens you know the con the the uh i get the vibe of the reply <laughs> i get the vibe right but that first line is like it reminded me so much of why i purposely did you know withdrew, withdrew from the scene and kind of just stayed in my own little bubble and completely cut communication with all those people from that particular scene especially from 1948 that i kind of was around and shit i don't really see them i might check them out on instagram from time to time but they're not my friends i don't talk to them anymore i don't really give a fuck about most of them and if i found out some of them died i would literally punch the air but that first line legitimately describes you know eloquently puts into place some of my issues this idea that you know there's some sort of hierarchy or like you know that you're above and the commentators and fans are below and you look at them like peons and little pieces of shit and it's funny because one of the, one of the reasons why i love virgil and one of the reasons why a lot of people love virgil because virgil was legitimately for the culture and for the kids you know when people used to say for the kids for the kids virgil actually was about that he was that person that would actually be dming some random photographer in poland who had like a hundred followers and was asking him advice about how he can shoot his new netbook but these type of people like tremaine and those type of dudes they're the types to leave you on scene you know what i mean they're the types to fucking not even open your fucking dm when you send him your fucking portfolio or something like because they legitimately look at you like peons like you know no i'm the big down gorgan brand owner you're the peon so fans commented when the stands about players on the court trash talking it doesn't sound like he's trash talking though. that's a problem if it was just trash talking just being funny and poking and just you know playing the game fine also like this isn't i don't know i don't think it's that deep really to be continuing the trash talk anyway the funny situation he put here which is i think really telling is this part that i don't think he understands kind of baits him up he says here in this tweet here's a little morsel for your trolls 
Martin had the job before I did um, for a bit and left slash got clipped due to dogmatic systems. So he's alleging that Martin Rose was actually the unofficial official creative director at Supreme, but left or got fired before he did. But she still now is working for Supreme. So that to me is proof that the way Tremaine handled his exit for Supreme wasn't the right way to do it because basically it sounds like what he's saying martin had the job she maybe left because of the same issues that he was having with the c-suite you know part of the company being full of white people and maybe not being culturally diverse and not getting it and james jebbia being a little bit too much of a micromanager and not empowering people to make decisions blah 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 blah, blah. all of the issues that he was speaking about maybe martin rose ran into the same ones but she still didn't burn her bridge and she was still able to spin the block and able to do a collaboration with Supreme while her name is, you know, at a height, you know, it's, it's kind of popping more than it probably was at the, when she was probably first there. And it's probably served everyone better because now it makes Supreme look better than before. And it also makes Martin Rose look better because it means it's, you know, it's another kind of notch on her fucking belt. So this is kind of proof that even if you do have a bad experience with the company, it doesn't end well. You can still end it in the way where you don't burn a bridge. And this is someone, this is coming from me. I'm Mr. Burn a Bridge. I'm Mr. Not Giving a Fuck and just, you know, saying it as I see it and potentially fucking up opportunities and bags I don't even know about just because I just don't really care about playing, you know, playing industry games. But he's clearly showing here that he wasn't able to do it, not also understanding that the Martin Rose situation is maybe something to kind of maybe emulate and want to maybe copy and maybe something to kind of want to use as an example of how to handle an exit or a leave kind of gracefully. But for some reason, he doesn't want to see it that way. Um, and of course, he said, you know, legends, I digress, blah, blah, blah. But of course, that then resulted and ended with me getting blocked. So, you know, there's no more communication there to be said for it. Um, again, like I said, it's unfortunate because, you know, I think very, I think less of men who go around blocking other men, I think it's incredibly gay, incredibly retarded. But I also understand from his point of view, if he was annoyed and pissed off about what I said and how it came across a bit snarky and a bit condescending and shit, I get it. I completely understand. But I think the genesis and the point of what I was saying was echoed by way of way by more people who had way more, I think, lethal things to say about him. And I'm going to actually show some of it on the screen here because... I think some of these comments will show you that although what I said could be seen as being rude and being mean, there are a ton of people on social media who are saying way meaner things about him. So this is a post courtesy of Stay Grounded TV. Um, they do a lot of good stuff about reporting on shit regarding streetwear. And they posted the same thing that he said that I spoke about, the kind of subtweet towards Supreme about the Martin Rose collaboration. So let's look at some of the comments. Some of the comments on here says the following. Imagine your whole identity is, I know Virgil, and whining about Supreme like it's not the hot ex that dumped you. Another person here says, Used to think highly about this guy, but as time passes, I keep seeing why Kanye felt how he did. Another person says, You don't see Barbara Kruger complaining every day, lol. And she basically invented the box logo font. And I think she got paid like a couple thousand or something, if I'm mistaken. Something like p peanuts in the beginning. So it's like Barbara Kruger got scummed. Big up Barbara Kruger. She actually had a, rep she actually had a not retrospective. She had an exhibition here recently that I fucking missed in London. But big up Barbara Kruger. Um, this guy says the same goofy shit every month. Another person. This dude has been writing the same comments since he left Supreme. Another person. Yeah, Supreme is totally copying the guy who's only relevant for putting all over print of smudges on jogger sets hashtag delusional another person tired of this man alr another person corny another person everything he says makes me feel embarrassed for defending him at one point another person smh bro let it go let it go which is something that i've been saying from the beginning but you know you know how it is with the internet you say a lot of constructive good things about people but then when you say a mean thing that's the first thing they see and then that's all they see and they just judge it and it continues. So it is what it is. What can you do? Another one says, he can't let go just like I can't about his wife, his white wife and pretending he for the culture, Zaza. 
that shouldn't really matter but i'm sure for a lot of people that did damage his credibility <laughs> that really doesn't matter who you marry who you sleep with who you date who whatever you know you can still be um what do you call it you can still be an activist you can still be for the people and not marry within your race i don't think that really matters for the most part but i think for a lot of people out there that look to him as somebody that put their whole identity behind it and that was what they stood by it kind of looked a bit funny when you popped out with the whitest looking white woman you've ever seen <laughs> you know what i mean it's like raw she's not even mixed race <laughs> this is like an emma this is like a laura do you know what i mean it's like rotted all right cool <laughs> you want to put fucking whip slaves on t-shirts and shit you know what i mean but <laughs> it's so funny she's not even like spanish or like colombian or like you know <laughs> he went for the whitest of the it's like oh brilliant you gotta fucking love it down with a white man but when i'm in bed i'm banging the white girl with all respect of course intended you know what I mean? that's his wife and shit let's continue most dangerous brand in the world if supreme posted bro's address online this would be a whole different story what Come on, bro. Everybody knows this. People on the internet as well. He, he's not doxing Supreme. Like, you can find Supreme. I'm sure there's a business listing you can find Supreme's headquarters at if you wanted to. He's not doxing Supreme. Like, relax. <laughs> this guy's going crazy. This hobo. This hobo look seems to start to transfer to his intelligency as well. Jack in the staff. Okay, I don't know what that guy's talking about. Dead in Tears is weak. Another person here says, Dude, Dude's designs are race baiting nonsense with zero surprises. He sold out and now he wants a refund. Ooh. Shut up, Tremendous. Another person, laughing emoji. Tell bro to stop yapping. Another one says, They'll jack your style but not jack you off. What? What does that even mean? They'll jack your style but not jack you off. Why would you want someone to jack you off? By the way, getting jacked off is the most overrated thing in the world, by the way. Jack, like, just jack yourself off. Like, having someone else try and jack you off is a waste of time. Don't care. Very overrated. Same goes for fucking shower sex, like, <clears throat> myth. Um, uh, what style man's looks, man, man's look homeless, 9 out of 10. Just let it go, bruh. The homeless should not be famous. Fucking hell. I say the same shit about my old job, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fair you know what i think is also interesting about that comment because it, that's funny he says that maybe the truth of the reality is maybe tremaine is way more gutted that he didn't work out than what he's making it seem like because he made it seem like he made it seem like he didn't really care like it wasn't that big of a deal i just did it for the culture I did it for the look, I did it for this, I did it for the legacy, I did it for the da 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 da. He wasn't really bold, like he didn't seem like he was that infatuated and that, you know? Because I remember I made a really, I made, I made a really innocuous observation when he first got the job. I was like, oh, he doesn't, he's not really posting about it much on his Instagram. When I was checking, seeing these socials and shit. Again, that's a minor thing, doesn't really matter, no. But I remember the time thinking, that's a bit odd, isn't it? You got a Supreme job, like you're the creator to fucking Supreme. And you just started Denim Tears just the other day. Yes, it's popping and doing its thing, but this is still a fucking great job. And I, and I was thinking of the, of the of the thing of like, it would probably help and improve his own brand. Like you get to run two brands at the same time, both with completely different ideas, codes, philosophies and principles and whatever going forward. But then because of the work you're doing with Supreme at that level, that might help to influence what you're doing with your brand and vice versa. So by the time your contract ends or maybe you leave, you're probably a far better designer than than when you were when you started so it's going to add something and i was thinking if the salary is what i think it is that money could also go to like you know r d manufacturing maybe opening up some new fucking product categories maybe starting your own footwear shit because of that money is going straight to you know what i mean because you're not really use that money's not to live you're already living off the back of your own brand so that money you're getting from this from supreme is just straight up like fun project experiment do crazy things so maybe that's what he actually was thinking because if I'm not mistaken, he got like over like, you know, over fucking 500 grand a year or something, right? So if that's the case, maybe he actually was a lot more hurt that it ended the way it ended, which is why we're getting these freakouts, which is why he keeps subliminally 
sending shots at them because maybe it was like, oh man, that actually was opportunity. I kind of fucked up because apart from the money and being able to feed that back into own brand, imagine also if you're somebody that like him who's an activist and shit, and you're about you know presenting or putting forward um, information about the plight of black people, especially in, in you know in North America or maybe across the world or people marginalized minorities in general maybe you see it as your like purpose in life to take that message to the highest platform possible and what bigger platform than a brand like supreme so you also miss opportunity to maybe bring people in maybe he was thinking of using certain photographers for lookbooks and campaign ideas maybe certain videos you know i mean all these things that you have plans for that are really going to elevate certain voices that you felt like weren't being you know pushed out there has now gone that guy might have a point. He says, you know, it's a funny line. I say that same shit about my old job, I'm not going to lie. But that might be the point. Maybe you, it's like when you, you split up with somebody that you pretend like you didn't like. If you just keep talking about them a lot, it means you're probably heartbroken, you know? So maybe that's why he's talking about that. Maybe he's really, really heartbroken. And I never considered that, actually. Um, because he always acted like he wasn't really that bothered about the job. But maybe he was, and he was just pretending like he wasn't to be cool. Um, he reminded me of my old uh, miserable grandpa. Stay complaining. This dude is such a clown. Then the tears fell off. Emery ain't nothing but a rage bait page at this moment. Bro, can I never hear about this guy again? He's so annoying. The funny thing is, I get the same comments on my little tiny rinky dink podcast. Whenever I cover Tremaine, whenever I cover Denim Tears, especially if it's some like scandal or drama like this, people are always saying, please change, please stop, please enough, no more. So <laughs> I think it's the general consensus across social media that people just hate hearing this guy complain. Or I think just in general, I think people just hate to hear men or to see men bitch and moan. It's just not a very manly thing to do. Another thing continues here. Drop GG says, he's the most sorry ass loser I've ever seen. It's Oh yeah, this is Drop GG's leaving a comment. He's the most sorry ass loser I've ever seen. It's crazy. It's been over a year since he was out of the company. Let it go, old man the disrespect that's the thing the disrespect he's being subjected to because of his inability to let it go is also something that you should probably consider just let it go because people are talking about you crazy online you don't you shouldn't be getting spoken about like this because you're not that bad of a guy really you just had a bad job bad experience it didn't go well but people are talking about you crazy because you come across crazy just let it go for this sake man reputation wise maybe he doesn't give a fuck maybe that's where I, another supreme went up in all departments since bro left all the current looks go crazy compared to having everything made when he was there um and there's a few more comments i need to go through and then we'll end this um it says where is it uh blah, blah, blah. where's the tweet i think it was, was it over and under was it over and under i think it might be was it over and under who was it i think it was someone on here bear with me a second as i get this to load uh all blood does is wine was it on over and under's page or was it on the other page that i was on oh there we go yeah so there's um, more pages here um courtesy of sneaker fetish on twitter so who i follow is a good follow he says if they've been doing it for years one why did he sign on to the company and two marry their lead designer <laughs> that's a very good point <laughs> that's a very good point very fucking good point another person says here while he was head designer, he visited the headquarters once. Shows you just how committed he was. Really? Is that true? He was at the headquarters once. Tremaine, you can't do that sort of shit, brother. Come on, Giza. Is that true? Big up this person as well. I'm too real for you on social. They're a really good account to follow on Twitter too for street venues and shit. I'm not too sure if that's true. But allegedly, they're saying he was only at the office once. Yo, that is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Tremaine not giving a fuck, mate. Tremaine acting. Tremaine is acting like a Gen Z kid. You know how Gen Z kids work, or how Zoomers are working. How they're super entitled and don't want to pay their dues, and you know they want things to be done a certain way. You know they have to be comfortable with their work you know they complain a lot <laughs> they demand loads of things that's what tremaine was acting when he went to work at supreme fucking crazy 
I actually want to see some of these quote tweets before I end. Um, let's see some of these quote tweets on here. Bear with me a second. Apologies for the delay. If you're liking the stream, you see me you like you like what you see, please like the stream as well. Don't be fucking lame. Like the stream down below if you don't mind. Let me view some of the quotes on here. What are they saying? What are they saying? Boom, 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 boom. What are you guys saying as well in the comments? Sorry, my chat. I thought I've completely ignored you. I'm apologies. I've been rambling here for too long. Um, the movie Crant High Voltage Rules Supreme during the film Kids Era was gold. Yes, the EBM, of course. Iconic movie, by the way. Everyone should watch Kids, even if you're not a fan of Supreme. Virgil for the people, Tremaine. Uh, true, true, uh, is it trauma main? Tra trauma main <laughs> is a crime of a narcissist, exactly. Big up, Coiler. I don't, I don't even, I don't even think he's a narcissist, you know. I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him grace. I don't even think that guy's a narcissist. I just think he's heartbroken, honestly. I just think he's heartbroken. I think he actually wanted a job to work out and it didn't, and he didn't expect it to end the way it ended, you know. Like, I think he's just heartbroken. Um, so let's see some of these quote tweets. What else was people saying here? Man made a minstrel show poster and an undercover slash prime hoodie. No one biting Chewbacca. Jesus Christ. Another one says, it was cool when you were writing the checks though. I've never seen someone so full of shit. Fucking no. Honestly, Tremaine has to see this sort of stuff and see how badly he's looking. And see how badly people are talking about him and want to not have this be the narrative around his name. Because it's also, I think, I'd imagine this is... But I've already seen it though. I was going to say, I wonder if this is taken away, away from some of the luster and some of the allure and some of the good vibes around Dead in Tears. Or maybe because he's done a good job actually, to be fair to Tremaine. He's done a good job in terms of, even though Dead in Tears was like his nickname and that turned into a brand, I think a nickname that Virgil gave him, he's done a good job of like not being Dead in Tears. He's Tremaine Emery, you know? So that's, that's a good thing. He's kind of separated the brand from his nickname or from his fucking, you know, whatever. So maybe people don't think of Denim Tears and think of him. But I wonder if all of this bad publicity, sorry, bad, you know, feeling around him is going to negatively affect his brand. And people are going to stop wanting to buy Denim Tears because they think he's corny and they think he's annoying and he's whatever. I don't know. Um, another person here says, nobody cares. Denim Tears is ass. I saw a homeless guy in all gap that looked exactly like this yesterday. <laughs> I'm sad. I'm tired. This person says, "I promise you, Supreme ain't even thinking about you, B. And you ain't from the streets, so stop talking like you is." Yeah, that's something as well that I've noticed he does, which is something I've kind of, I kind of overlooked because it's just you know it kind of is what it is. But I've always wondered why people in streetwear do this anyway. Maybe because I'm actually from ends, and I've have friends who have partaken in that lifestyle and are still doing it. And some friends who are unfortunately not with us anymore, and some friends who are unfortunately behind bars for you know double digit, high double digit numbers and shit. And I've also been involved in some very not so savory things, which I'm not proud of at all. And even when I think about it, I fucking cringe. I'm embarrassed about some of the stuff that I've done and shit in the past. So maybe because of that upbringing, I don't really like get online and try and like posture or act away to kind of you know give this image or whatever it's not necessary but then people that haven't lived that way love to talk that way you know it's oh, it's weird like how are you gonna how are you gonna get into streetwear and fashion and then try to act bad like who are you batting up in streetwear you know what i mean who are you batting up in fashion like really it's a bit you know i mean it's a bit like you're kind of bullying the weak you know like it's just, you don't get any props for batting up some like showroom girl <laughs> or some guy at the door at some shitty cocktail but i don't know i don't know really talk you know talking drug talk all this uh, i don't know i don't know again none of my business none of my business everyone does what they want to do another one says i hate this nigga so much <laughs> that's pure in it i hate this nigga so much another one says i really want to root i really want to root for him exactly i'm the same i really want to root for him but this is not it he doesn't even wear his own designs yeah let's say about that one the better this dude is corny as fuck. Nobody, that friend who always looks for attention. <laughs> again, like, I, I, I want to know what this is about, man. I wonder if it's just the industry, because again, I don't know him that well. But the guy that I do know of, 
was never like this. I wonder if this is just the industry. This is what it does to you. It corrupts everybody. It turns you into the person that you would have hated. I wonder if this is what's happening. Or was he always this person? And now that he's got money, clout, attention, fame, whatever, he's now fully actualizing who he actually is. You know? I don't know. Another one. He's weird. Individual all around. What's it? Uh, get his ass out of here. He's got to stop freestyling on the internet. <laughs> this dude is a loser. Nigga, you ass. F fuck out of here. Supreme was dumped stuff was dumped as juice the whole time you were there and been up since you've been gone. What a to be fair that that might be a coincidence as well, by the way. I don't think that is all because of how oh, he left and now Supreme is better. I think a lot of people are also attributing a lot of mess to him that wasn't him. And people are also just happy that he's gone and then everything that has happened after the fact of they're trying to make it seem like you know, it's all perfect because he's not there. Another one says, what a lame. I hate this bum ass nigga. Stank ass nigga. Jesus. He might be the corniest person in the industry. Jesus, Tremaine, man. Look how they're talking about you, brother. If Musk, if Musty Rick Ross don't push, don't hush the hell up. They're calling him Musty Rick Ross. God almighty. And that's it. So, yeah, it doesn't look good, man. It doesn't look good. He probably doesn't give a fuck. I wonder if he's blocking every single person that says this sort of stuff. That again is going to be hard and it's going to be tiring and long. But I guess it is what it is. So that's how it ended. That's how it ended. So I'm currently on the block list. Which again like I said is understandable. Considering what I may have said might have been a little bit mean spirited. But I think the point remains. Um, Tremaine and Denim Tears could have been great. I still think they got the potential to be great. But nowadays people only attribute corny. You know corny you know very insulting memes to them like fried chicken watermelon all that sort of shit and people are now taking the piss out of him directly and making that to be a thing as you can see courtesy of this particular tweet as well that somebody posted right this tweet went viral a little bit um regarding tremaine shows you how badly he's being fucking looked at and considered online um reputation is in fucking tatters somebody tweeted a picture um of a paper plate that had some chicken and watermelon on it and somebody says thought this was a dead empty shirt and i think tremaine saw this and i bet i'm gonna do something with it so i think tremaine's working on some design or something but this is what people think of when they look at when they think of you know fucking dead empty which is also incredibly reductive and very insulting but again you have to always look at the founder and how he's acting he always has self to blame for how people are responding to his brand so as much as i understand his frustration and shit i think he's dealt with all this stuff really badly um obviously as you can see vis-a-vis -vis the reception online i think if everybody is telling you, you you're approaching this wrong you should let it go then maybe you should let it go but maybe he won't maybe he will who gives a fuck um it is what it is it is what it is